Senator Moran. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you for conducting this hearing. Uh, press and media reports, Mr. Elwell, uh, indicate that Boeing was implementing changes in the MAX after the first crash, uh, and that is at least an explanation for why they may be close to having a, quote, fix uh, for uh, that MAX. Um, is there anything, a requirement that, uh, first of all, is the FAA notified of that effort to make corrections to the MAX after the first crash? Senator, yes, the, the, uh, the Boeing company submitted an application for a software update to the MCAS, an MCAS software update uh, after the Lion Air accident. And uh, is there a corresponding uh, duty to warn uh, either on the part of Boeing Corporation or the FAA, either pilots or airlines, uh, a, a duty to warn or a notification that uh, there may be something wrong and a fix is on its way? So nine days after the uh, Lion Air accident, the, uh, the FAA put out an emergency airworthiness directive, uh, followed by a communique to all authorities around the world uh, who fly the MAX. And what we pointed out was, I'll back up a little bit, the FAA's role, primary role in any accident investigation is for continual operational safety. In other words, if in the course of an accident something of of immediate import is discovered, we don't wait for the end of the accident to, for the final report. We act immediately. And in this case, the initial data suggested that a reminder was needed, and that's what the emergency AD was, a reminder was needed to, for pilots and operators of this aircraft to apply standard runaway stab trim procedures should this be encountered. And that's, that's what the emergency AD was. Now, the software update that you're referring to is a, uh, we, we, Boeing came to us with this and we talked to them about it. We accepted their application. They began work. But we determined that the issues that this software update was making or the, 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 the things that it was improving upon for MCAS um, did not warrant uh, anything more than uh, the, the, the announcement that this was in progress. Okay. Uh, Mr. Elwell, I'll, I'll stay with you for a, a moment longer. Uh, I suppose that there's always a question of why we would have a private company certify their product. Uh, in this instance, it happens in the, in, in the aviation world, it, it happens all the time. Uh, what's, the, what's the justification for that? Uh, we use ODAs, Organization Designation Authorizations, regularly. Um, would the FAA be able to certify aircraft without the use of that designation? Senator Moran, that's a, that's, that is a very important question, but l let me go back to what you said in the question, that we allow companies to certify their own craft. We I, I know I've spoken in the way that you would phrase it, uh, I, and I understand the distinction. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to discount the importance of an ODA. In fact, I'm hoping that you'll confirm to me the importance with proper oversight, with FAA certification required, the actions that are taken by private companies sure. to uh, provide the information necessary to certify is important, and how would we do this in aviation without that process? So the concept of ODA has, as I said, it's been around for 60 years, and some form of delegation has been around since the 20s. It is, it is, the it is part of the fabric of, of what we've used to become as safe as we are today. And I don't want to give the impression that ODA is some resource, uh, a way for us to sort of stretch our resources. We have very strict oversight on every participant in an ODA program. And we may sh make sure that they are experts in the field, that they have uh, the appropriate understanding of FAA regs and manuals, they have uh, professional integrity is checked, everything. But to your point, if we had no ODA at all, uh, it would, an estimation it would require roughly 10,000 more employees um, uh, and, and to, to, to do that role at the FAA and about $1.8 billion um, for our certification office in the FAA. How does that compare with that, that process, that designation process compare to Europe and other 
across the globe when it comes to the use of that process? So um, it's another it's excellent common? question. The European Aviation Safety Agency is the, the, the next you know, biggest certification body in the world, um, and they leverage ODA much more than we do. Um, so, so it's, it's nothing, used around the world. In, in this arena, there's nothing unusual uh, to this process. No. It's been ongoing a long time and used globally. Is that true? Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.